Hello everyone. This is the third video in a sequence on kidneys that I've entitled Kidneys for Key Stage 4, where we look at the structure and function of the kidneys and then go through all of the processes involved at each section of it. So in this one, in this part, we're going to look at the loops of Henle and a process known as tubular secretion. So in part one, when we talk we talked about structure and function and I labelled some parts of this diagram that you see here. And in the second part when we talked about ultra filtration, this is just merely as a, as a bit of a recap. We talked about ultra filtration happening in this upper part in the glomerulus. So I'll just label it so we, we know where we're starting from. So we had ultra filtration in the glomerulus. And then I said in this region here, if we just colour it in, not coloured in particularly well, but we said in this part here, this region was called the proximal convoluted tubule. And we said that we got selective reabsorption. There. So the filtrate passed through the glomerulus and in selective reabsorption we got back our glucose, our amino acids, etc. Now this video is going to pick up with what happens next. And it essentially revolves around this U-shaped structure. So if I just put a few red dots to show which bit I'm throwing in rather than colour the whole thing in. This structure here that I've put a few red dots in, this is called the loop of Henley, the loop of Henley, and we can split it into sort of three sections. The first part is this descending limb. You can see, if I draw it in purple here, you've got a this part goes down like that. Then we've got the curved part at the bottom. Then we have this portion of the loop of Henley that goes up, and that's called the ascending limb. So I'll just make a note there. So we've got the descending limb, which is this one. And then here we have the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. So I'll talk about that first and then we'll come on to tubular secretion. Now the loop of Henle, this long U-shaped portion of each nephron of the kidney, is designed to help control the amount of water and salt, or sodium chloride, that we have in our urine. It, it's, it's involved in the recovery of water and salt, if you like. And this function allows production of urine that is far more concentrated than the blood. So I'll make a note here that the job of the loop of Henle ultimately is involved in the recovery of water and salt. from the urine that we're going to produce. So that's the job of the loop of Henle. Now, the liquid entering the loop is a solution comprising of water, salt, urea, and other substances that have passed along from the proximal convoluted tubule. So that, that's key to remember. Now, in the first segment of the loop, this descending limb, what we find is that it's actually permeable to water. So water is able to move out of that descending limb and pass into the general uh, blood circulation. So water, if I put this in blue, water is able to move out of this descending limb to pass into what, what are called peritubular capillaries. These are tiny blood vessels that travel alongside nephrons. So th these and I, I should really have coloured them in red, but I'll colour them in yellow just to make it stand out a bit more on this diagram. So these here, these bits that I'm colouring in yellow, these are the peritubular capillaries. And that's what this water is going to pass back into. Now, the liquid reaching the bend of the loop, so this bottom part,
heart here is much richer than the blood plasma in salt and urea. Now that's important because as the liquid then returns through the ascending limb, sodium chloride or salt diffuses out of the tubule into the surrounding tissue where its concentration is lower. So sodium chloride or salt is going to move out of this ascending limb. So if you think about it like this, as you're coming down the first part of the loop of Henley, there's, there's more water within that loop, within that loop of Henley, the descending limb, than there is in the peritubular capillaries around it. And you study about osmosis and you say that water is from high concentration to low. So more water in the loop of Henley, less in the peritubular capillaries. So water is drawn out. So that's why I drew the blue arrows moving out. Then on the ascending limb, because there's now more water in the peritubular capillaries, it's as if there's less salt. So think of it like this, more salt in the ascending limb of the loop of Henley, less salt in the peritubular capillaries around it. So salt now moves out, and that's why I've drawn the red arrows. So the blue arrows represent water, the red arrows represent the salt moving. And this is by diffusion, which is in contrast to the proximal convoluted tubule where we said we got selective reabsorption by active transport. So the glucose and the amino acids went back into the blood circulation by active transport, but the water and the salt here moved by just simple diffusion. Now, in a healthy person, the reabsorption of salt from the urine exactly maintains the bodily requirement. So during periods of low salt intake, virtually none is allowed to escape in the urine. But in periods of high salt intake, the excess is excreted. So that's a little bit about the loop of Henley. Now, if you follow this through, and I'm going to colour this part in green now. If you follow the loop of Henley from the descending limb down at the bottom curve, up the ascending limb, we then get to this portion here. Now, this part in green that I've coloured in is the distal convoluted tubule. So the proximal convoluted tubule was to the left of this screen on the right, on the coloured in blue rather. And now in green, what we've got is the distal convoluted tubule. And it's here where we get this process of tubular secretion. Now, often in textbooks, they don't really mention tubular secretion in much detail. But I'm going to, just for completeness sake. So tubular secretion is the transfer of materials from peritubular capillaries to the renal tubular lumen. So essentially what I'm saying here is that, if I, I'll stick with the black arrows, this is the point where substances within these capillaries actually move into this nephron, this unit, like so. So where I've drawn this black arrow, this is where you get tubular secretion. So rather than having things like glucose, water, salt, etc. moving out, we now have things actually coming in to the distal convoluted tubule or this renal tubule lumen, if you like, lumen being the inside of it. Now, tubular secretion occurs in these epithelial cells that line the renal tubules and also in the collecting ducts to a degree. This secretion is, is caused mainly by active transport. So that's one thing to, to note here. This is mainly by active transport. But here, mainly by. Not always. So mainly by active transport. Now, usually only a few substances secrete are secreted because these substances are either just present in great excess or they are actually poisons in the body. 
So this is a further attempt by the kidneys to control concentrations of substances and in the main, help to maintain the blood at a normal, healthy pH. So that is the purpose really of tubular secretion. It helps to maintain a healthy pH, usually in the range of about 7.35 to pH 7.45. So that's what we're getting here. I'll just make a note of those pHs here. So we're maintaining a healthy pH of the range of about 7.35 to 7.45. Now the substances that are secreted into the tubular fluid for removal from the body are things like potassium. So I'm going to make a note of these. Just underneath. So these are some of the things that are passing from the capillaries into the distal convoluted tubule to get rid of them to help maintain the pH. So we've got things like K+, which is potassium ions. We've got H+, which are hydrogen ions. We have NH4. So NH4+, which are ammonium ions. And then we've got things like creatinine urea, some hormones, and even some drugs like penicillin. Because as I said, we're getting rid of poisons or toxins, and actually drugs in high concentrations could have that effect. So this is our opportunity to dispose of them, if you like, in the kidney. And that really is it. So this video is all about the loop of Henley and the control of water and salt, and the reabsorption, ultimately, of water and salt from that and the process of tubular secretion where we get a variety of ions and drugs and hormones, for example, passing from the capillaries into the distal convoluted tubule to get rid of them, to deliberately maintain a healthy pH level. Okay, so in the fourth part, what we're going to do is pick up on really the last bit of this nephron to speak about. It's the region from here to here where I've just labelled in red, the collecting duct. And we'll talk about osmoregulation there. Okay, I hope that helps.